I'm writing and I said that I wasn't going to film a video, but we got a really good question, so we're going to film a video. See? Bobby's tips for artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to the studio. Today, after I was done writing all day, by the way, all day, uh, I got a question from Savannah. And this is a really cool question, and uh, I, I really love this kind of ambition. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to not answer it. And basically what she says is that she's gone on trips to go visit uh, different museums and different things like that. And one of them was Wizard's Quest in Wisconsin Dells, which is a really cool fairy world, wizard world, interactive scavenger hunt place. And I've been there and I love, I love that place. That place was one of the places that inspired my, uh, my dream garden when we did the big installation, uh, because it's basically an interactive space that is just full of like artwork and and nifty things uh the unicorns and all kinds of fairy world things so the first question savannah asks is a lot of times i notice that those places are under construction and there are artists that are working on things they'll hire artists to do different things for them and how do those places find artists and that's a great question savannah uh i know for a fact that when we did the big installation we were contacted directly but I know that a lot of places like that will hire local artists. They'll con they'll either put an ad in the paper or put an ad out through their website to hire artists, or they'll look for artist associations or any kind of any kind of artist thing to help them find artists in their town. Usually, they work with local artists. Sometimes they'll know artists from another place uh, and bring them in. They'll have artist friends. The way that businesses or museums or different organizations find artists usually has to do a lot with just reaching out uh, to the community because usually there are a lot of really cool artistic people in the community. Yeah, like the call to artists. Yeah. It's good to be tapped into those crowds because that's how the word usually gets out about the call to artists. The call to artists. Pretty much stay in touch with other artists and it's really good to get in contact with associations and stuff like that. Now, I am not a big fan of hoity-toity uh, art associations that are like, you must be blah, blah, blah. They have like strict uh, restrictions or whatever. But for the most part, places that where you find artists, artists are really cool. When you find artist collectives and things like that, um, it, it's a real big benefit because artists in numbers are very powerful, uh, especially because being an artist is a very solitary thing. That goes to your second question, Savannah, which is you love drawing fantasy creatures and you love being in that fantasy world and you've always wanted to create something like that for yourself. So how do you create something like that. And I love that question because that is extremely ambitious. It is something that I think is really freaking awesome. Now, me personally, I have not created something like that, but this is something that I have thought a lot about. We have been part of uh, a couple of projects that were large scale like that. The Happy Art Tour was a project that we did where Clee and I did two separate rooms. Uh, she did the Firefly Room and I did the Dream Forest. And they were huge installations and they were interactive. Each one of my sculptures was actually interactive. When you went up to the sculpture, it moved and it talked to you. And there were five sculptures. And in the Firefly room, the fireflies moved around and it just looked like twilight. And there was a giant oak tree in the corner. So it was a really cool, soothing experience in both of those rooms. It was all about setting up the space in a way where it was interactive, where when you walked into it, you were immersed into the space. You became part of the exhibit. And... That was something similar that I felt going into that world, going into Wizard's Quest, was like all of a sudden you were in this game. You were in like a fantasy land and you were trying to figure out all the clues and what was going on. And I love that kind of thing. And ever since that experience, I've wanted to build a big installation like that. When it comes to creating a place like that, there are several ways that I'm guessing you could go. And like I said, the disclosure here is that I have not done this yet. But it is something that I've thought about. Some of the ways that you could go is starting off small, like basically doing it as an installation, as a temporary installation type thing, where maybe a local business or some gymnasium or something like that allows you to either rent the space or they're having an event, so they want you to put it in there. And in that case, what you're going to want to do is build these exhibits in a way, which is what I did with the Happy Art Tour, build them in a way where they are self-supporting, where they... 
can stand on their own, and no matter what the space, you're able to actually put that in there. Aye, and then they can easily be dis well, easily is a relative term. They can be disassembled and stored later. It yeah. can be more complicated to build that way, but it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have been easier to just build it where it was just like a permanent thing. But because in building it, I was thinking about the fact that it would need to be taken apart and then rebuilt again. Um, I was very careful about the way that we we put all the parts together. Like the big oak tree that went into corner came apart in four separate parts. And that's another thing, too. If you're doing this, you could not only reach out to artists, local artists, but you could reach out to like set designers and uh, stagehands and people that are in the theater they have a really good idea of how to build props. And that's basically what you're doing is you're building this entire world. So you want to build these props. And like I said before, there is a lot of power when you put a group of artists together to do the different things that need to be done. It's true, not only creatively, but budgetary wise, each person contributing resources. One way to finance this thing is you could talk to the local businesses, especially if you're doing it as an event. And you could have them as sponsors. So, like, the 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 idea is when you plan this thing out to actually plan it down to a T. Now, like, Wizard's Quest is set up like a game. It is a three-dimensional, life-size game. So that's one of the things that you'd want to do is come up with the planning. And either you get together with a bunch of friends and you put that together. And then you think about what kind of props, what is the adventure, what is it that you need, do you need anything that uses animatronics? Like I said, in my sculptures, I used animatronics for the sculptures, so if you do need that, do you know anyone? It is really important to understand that like, when you're working on a big scale project like this, it, you need to have people that you can work with to put this thing together. That's true, because it can feel like if you don't understand even one element of a project, like, you can feel like, well, how am I ever going to do it? I don't know anything about animatronics. Yeah. And, of course, YouTube University and other resources are great for that, but it's really awesome to find someone to collaborate with. The thing that you do want to make sure is that if you are putting a group together, because it's great, but there also might be some disagreements, right? So like one of the other projects that we worked in here in town, and I'm not going to mention it by name, they wanted to do a large scale like art party type thing, right? And in my mind, what I was thinking was more along the lines of like that kind of immersive uh, art event that you go in there. And it was more like a giant kegger with beer with a few paintings hanging on a fence, which was just not not what I thought it was going to be. So like every time I went to these meetings, because we had a meeting every week, I would suggest doing something. And basically my idea would get shot down because, they were, well, that's too ambitious or too whatever. And a lot of times it was like ideas, like simple ideas, like why don't we put in a misting machine and get a just a cheap projector and project a moving image on there so that when people are coming in, you've got this floating face saying, welcome to the art party. And, Ambiance and such. Yeah, like to set up the stage when you first get there. And uh, they were, oh, that's too ambitious. And I knew right then and there that it was going to be lame. Like it was just going to be lame. The thing is that that project was uh, what it was because that wasn't my project. Now with my project, I'm going to want to make sure that I have artists there that are like-minded, that I have people that are excited about doing this thing, about making this thing happen. I would approach it in that way. There are other ways that you could approach it depending on what your finances are. If you already have somebody who is willing to sponsor, I mean, different ways that you can finance it is to get businesses to sponsor, to get uh, art associations to sponsor it, to get artist groups to sponsor it, to get a grant for this project. But what matters most, if you're going to reach out to anyone else to sponsor it and give you money for this project, is making sure that you have the plan put together, that you know exactly how it's going to happen. So, like, it needs to take place in here first, and then you need to lay it out, maybe in a three-dimensional model, since it is going to be a, a vast space. Find a way to allow them to experience what exactly it's going to be so that they get excited about it. It's all about... Mutual excitement. You got to get people excited about this project. And if you're excited about it, chances are th they'll be excited about it. But you need to be able to present it in a way where at least because I know what goes on in here is sometimes hard to really explain. 
but you do your best when it comes to explaining it in a model. And you could set up sponsoring in different ways. You could either have uh, some kind of booklet with uh, something with their, their business name on it. You could have banners with their business name. If you print up posters, it will say sponsored by whatever. And the way that the sponsorship works, I would recommend looking into that because there's different tiers that they could pay for. And, and you know, d depending on how much money they give, it depends on which tier they're at. So there are ways to be able to finance something that is big like that, but you want to make sure that you've got it in here first and then that you're able to lay it out in a way where you could explain it to people. Yeah, and give yourself a healthy timeline because it's probably going to take several months longer than you think it will. Yeah, <laughs> in, in fact, I would I would maybe plan it out and, and, and think about the steps that you want to. I want to accomplish this. I want to have a solid idea uh, in three months. I want to have uh, a model laid out of exactly what's happening in six months. And during that time, I want to find a team of people that are going. So, like, just plan it out. Plan it out because don't worry about someone else coming up with the idea first. If it is your original thought, then you're going to create something that nobody's ever seen before. That'll give you the opportunity to scout out different places. Because one of the reasons that Wizard's Quest is uh, in a great location is because it's right in the downtown Wisconsin Dells area, right by Ripley's, believe it or not, in that little area where there's like this weird alien museum and tattoo shop. But it, it's in a good area. Their ticket prices are great. They only charge $19 to get in. So it's like there are different things that they're doing that really works as far as location and uh, pricing of their stuff. It's making sure that you are giving yourself enough time to make this happen. And basically by fachunking it, like you basically break it down into the smallest possible steps and then lay it out. And then when it comes to that time of doing that, just do it. You know, and if you got to call people and it's terrifying, like one of the things with big projects like this is that you are going to face every single uh, fear and comfort zone that you have in order to make it happen. But in doing that, then you become somebody who has done it. And so after you have done it, you get props for doing it. No matter what, you're going to run into roadblocks. You're going to run into uh, making a mistake. You're going to run into doing it wrong. You're going to run into all kinds of mistakes, but as long as you give yourself time to get there, you can run into those mistakes, pick yourself up, learn from it, and then move forward. Awesome, awesome question. I really appreciate it. Uh, and good luck with this project. Keep us updated. Let us know what is going on with it. That would be awesome. Yeah, happy artist questing. Yeah, happy artist questing. This is awesome. I love it. And I'm curious to know if you guys have any input, anything that I may have missed. This is just off the top of my head. I was just brainstorming to myself while doing this video. So uh, it just got me excited because I love, I love big projects like that. I love ambitious projects, uh, especially from creatives and, and wanting to do something that uh, typically people don't do. So if you guys have any ideas, just leave those in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. I, I, like I said again, I am uh, probably going dark because I am spending my entire days writing and I'm getting really, really... Uh, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm in a good place now with the writing, so that's good news. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to subscribe, you click right over here. And that's it. You want to say goodbye, Clee? Good day. All right. Adios.